Hey guys! Today we have a video about unusual and seemingly illogical and strange animal behaviors. Let's begin. In one of the deserts of Arabia, nomadic people like diversifying their diet. The spiny-tailed lizard is a popular local delicacy. The reptile usually hides from the sun in a burrow, but that's not a very safe shelter. A caught lizard stays fresh for a couple of days. For the other lizards to avoid a similar fate of being caught by people or other predators, they need an ally. This black scorpion is also looking for a hiding place, preferably a lizard's burrow, as it wants to hide in the cool shade. Two completely different species of animals make a deal. The scorpion will never sting the homeowner, while the lizard makes sure that the venomous tenant feels at home. The scorpion pays back by serving as a guard. It scares away foxes and other predators. Their alliance makes lizard hunting a dangerous undertaking. The worst thing is when a human goes into such burrows. A sting of this type of scorpion is not deadly to humans, but it will hurt for a couple of days. Both species benefit from this kind of a living arrangement. It's a great example of animal symbiosis. The lizard is protected from the predators, while the scorpion gets to hide from the heat. The sight of what happens in North America every year is truly amazing. Flocks of pelicans fly to a special beach in the Sea of Cortez and they arrive on time. The tide has reached its highest point and the sea is giving them their reward. The entire coastline is covered in grunion fish. The adult pelicans know when exactly the grunions will be beaching themselves and they pass this knowledge to their offspring flying with them. The grunions just don't throw themselves out on the shore with the incoming waves for no good reason. As weird as it sounds, they do it to procreate. To lay eggs, the females burrow themselves into the sand by moving with their tails forward, and the males curl up around them, fertilizing the eggs. They lay eggs where the marine predators can't get to them, above the highest tide level. During the next spring tide, their offspring will hatch and return to the sea. It would seem that catching fish out of the water would be easy for pelicans, but they don't have the necessary equipment. Their beaks are too big to scoop up the grunions from the sand. The food is so close yet so far away. The pelicans go to fish in the surf zone and behind them the fish continue to lay their eggs. But when the fish return to the sea, pelicans get their opportunity to do what they do best, dive for the prey. There are only two types of fish that spawn this way. The second type is located off the coast of Newfoundland. At least a million tons of Kaplan fish beach themselves for the same purpose as the grunions, to spawn. It's a true gift for the bald eagles and silver gulls. The males try to fertilize the eggs laid in the sand by the females. Capelins spawn during the high tide, and in a few days it will be all over for this fish, most of which will die after laying their eggs in the sand. Capelins make an incredible sacrifice to ensure their eggs are laid on the shore, where they will be both safer and warmer than in the ocean. Fish lying on the beach is a free and easy treat, and there is so much of it that animals even bury it as a food reserve. It turns out that heat is not the only problem in the desert, but cold is one as well, which the inhabitants of the Kalahari Desert experience on their own skin during the winter. The temperature here can be so low at dawn that insects don't even fly which is a problem for the fork-tailed drongo. The fork-tailed drongo is a kind of true sparrow songbird. Drongo is the most prominent trickster in the Kalahari Desert. And those are his victims, a family of meerkats, masters of desert life. Having warmed up in the morning sun, the meerkats begin their search for breakfast. Now the drongo can use its tricks, but first it needs to gain its prey's trust. 
When the Drongo sees a praying eagle, it makes a warning sound. Having heard it, the grateful meerkats quickly hide out in their burrows. When the eagle is gone and the danger has passed, they come out of their hiding and continue hunting for small animals. Now that the Drongo has gained their trust, the bird starts using it. It waits for one of the meerkats to catch prey and makes the warning sound again. But this time, it's a false alarm. The meerkats do believe it, however, and run to their hiding places again, leaving their prey unguarded. So the Drongo quickly grabs the prey and leaves the meerkats with nothing. Now the meerkats got smarter and won't fall for the same trick again. The Drongo tries to use the same move on them again in a couple of minutes, but it doesn't work. The bird flies off to a tree and enviously watches the meerkat catch a scorpion. That's a delicious treat which the Drongo would love to eat, but he can't get it on its own. Suddenly, an alarm call of a sentinel meerkat is heard, and no meerkat will ignore that. Sentinels don't lie, but in reality, the sentinel meerkat sees no danger right now. Can you guess who that was? Sure, it was the Drongo. It's learned to imitate the meerkat danger call. Scientists are amazed by this ability. Now the Drongo can enjoy the scorpion. A whole family of meerkats was outwitted by one bird. However, Drongos only resort to deception in the most brutal winter months, while all the other time they really do protect the meerkats. So overall, the meerkat family probably benefits from this relationship, as do the Drongos. Let's move to a different desert, one in California this time. Another cunning species lives here. They make other species raise their offspring. It's the Spanish fly. It has an exceptional ability to find serfs. It all starts with the female insect digging up a hole where it lays the eggs. Now the Spanish fly leaves the hole, but the eggs stay in the sand at a depth of a couple centimeters, where the conditions are suitable for them. It's not too cold or too hot, not even under the scorching afternoon sun. In six weeks, the larvae hatch from the eggs, but there's nothing around except for the hot desert sand. The larvae need food and they won't find it here. Their lives depend on teamwork. As one well-coordinated group, they climb up the dry grass stalk. When they reach the top, it seems that there's nowhere else to go and they've become vulnerable to the scorching sun and predators. But they stay at the top in a densely infested mass. For those who got to the top of the stem, it has turned into a scene where a group of notorious scammers is about to perform. These larvae need someone to take them off of the stem and move them away. They want it so bad that they won't even refuse the human finger, although it's not the finger that they're waiting for. They're waiting for one particular insect, and here it comes. It's a bee. It crawled out of the hole it just made for its offspring. The bee flies to collect pollen, which is put into pollen pellets hanging off its hind legs, and brings them back to the hive. The pollen will make good food for the future offspring. And here comes the male bee looking for the female. The cluster of larvae reminds it of a female bee, as it smells the same since the larvae can emit pheromones exactly the same as that of the female bee. It lands for the mating, and in just a few seconds gets completely covered with larvae. The bee seems to be shocked by the unexpected weight gain at first, but now it takes off again. This time it got lucky, it really is a female bee. During the mating, the passengers leave their host and crawl all over the female bee. After the mating, the female returns to the hive to lay eggs and brings the larvae along. Finally, the cunning Spanish fly larvae have reached the place they were aiming for. It's safe here and there's a lot of food, a lot of pollen which was collected by the bee for its own offspring. In fact, the bee offspring can also become food. It's simply ingenious. Thanks to their ability to imitate other insects' pheromones, these flies have secured a great start in life for themselves. However, most boldly the pheromone trick is used by the females of one of the mantis types. 
We all know well that female mantis often eats the heads of the male after mating, and sometimes even during. However, there's one kind of mantis that went even further. Meet the false garden mantis female. What it does goes beyond any rules of decency. This female is not about to mate right now, but it's hungry. So what it does is start to emit pheromones to attract males. The male comes, but instead of mating, it simply gets eaten by the female. So if the females of other mantis types eat the males during or after mating, these particular females eat them with no mating at all. The female uses its pheromones for nutrition, not reproduction. Outraging audacity and cunning, but it helps the hungry females gain strength so they can really mate with another mantis male. Let's move to the foggy forest of the Andes Mountains, where they also have animals that get their food in an unusual way. Quite a spectacular picture can be seen here, namely a bear on a tree, and sometimes even several bears at once, and at a height of about 30 meters. These species are so rare that few people get to see them. They are called spectacled bears. The reason why they climb the trees is their diet. These animals mainly eat leaves and fruits. To get the fruit, however, they not only climb trees, but also do something strange and incredible there, at least for animals. For example, there's only one fruit left on this high tree, and it's hanging from a very thin branch, too thin to support the weight of the bear. And now even more bears are coming. What can they do to reach the fruit? Well, they know one trick they can use. They simply break the branches. The most important part is to bite the branch exactly enough so that it would lower to the level at which the fruit can be reached. The branch falls to the ground, and now the main task is to get down and reach the fruit before everyone else. Actually, almost all types of bears are quite smart and cunning. To make sure it's true, it's enough to recall how these animals catch salmon on its way to spawn. The bears simply open their mouths, and the prey gets inside. Nature continues to surprise us. And it has a lot more secrets which humanity is yet to unravel. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.